Learners. I am so glad you are here. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Today we are going to sing telephone. You ready? Hey, Ed Markey. Hey, Natalie. Hey, Brayden. Hey, Cassandra. Hey, Annis. Hey, Isabel. Hey, Anthony. Hey, Draven. Hey, Kennedy. Hey, Anderson. Hey, Valentina. Hey, Kimberly. Hey, Sophia. Hey, Emily. Hey, Aria. Hey, Sebastian. Hey, Juna Lees. Hey, Aubriana. Hey, Mariana. Hey, Alexia. Hey, Jaden. Hey, Manuel. Someone's calling my name. Hey, one of my minions. I think I hear it again. You're wanted on the telephone. If it isn't Miss Minion, I'm not home. Hey, Miss Minion. Someone's calling my name. Hey, Miss Minion. I think I hear it again. You're wanted on the telephone. If it isn't one of my minions, I'm not home. And our share today will be that I got a bunch of new plants for my room in my house. Do you want to see them? Going on a plant adventure. I got this plant. Going on a plant adventure. And I got this plant. And I got those plants. And let's go ahead and do our poem. Who remembers what poem this is? That's right, Fido. Read it with me. I have a little dog, and his name is Fido. He is nothing but a pup. He can stand on his hind legs if you hold his front legs up. And let's look at the sight words in here. What word is this? That's right, it's his. H-I-S spells his, his, his. What about this word? Yeah, is. I-S spells is, is, is. What word is this? Do you know it? He. H-E spells he, he, he. What about this word? Can. C-A-N spells can, can, can. What word is this? If. I-F spells if, if, if. What word is this? That's right, you. Y-O-U spells you, you, you. And let's do this one. What word is that? Up. U-P spells up, up. And let's read our message. Today is Tuesday, April 28th, 2020. Dear Room 109 Minions, Today, what word is that? We will learn about s -s -s subtraction. If Addition is putting things together. What might subtraction be? Love, Miss Minion. Hmm. We know addition is when we add things, we put things together. What might subtraction be? You can say subtraction could be. I don't know yet. We're going to have to find out during that today. Let's do our sight words. Remember, we have our last three new words, and then we'll do review, and we have three review words. What word is this? Do you remember it from yesterday? It starts with that TH blend. Th 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 that T-H-A-T spells that, that, that. Said. S 
A I D spell sad, sad, sad. Another one that starts with that T H the 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 then. T H E N spells then, then, then. And let's do our review words. Went. W E N T spells went, went, went. R. A R E spells R R R. My M Y spells my my my. Pause now to practice sight words. Pause ahora para practicar las palabras a la vista. Make our six sight words with magnetic letters and or write them on your whiteboard. Haga nuestras seis palabras a la vista con letras magnéticas y o escribalas en su pizarra. Readers, welcome back. Today we're going to be reading the second half of My Hero Is You, the book about how kids can fight coronavirus or COVID-19. It has two names. Yesterday we read all about Ario and the adventures that the kids had to help people stay safe. What were some of the important events that happened in the story so far? Tell the story out loud. Tell us what you remember. You can say, I remember. Yeah, Sarah didn't know how to be a hero. She was a little scared. Coronavirus can be a little bit scary for kids and grown-ups. But then she met Ario, the flying dragon. And Ario took her all over to be a hero. They met Salem, and they talked about things they can do to keep people safe, like coughing into their arms and washing their hands with soap and water and staying home in their house. Sarah and Ario also visited Sasha, and Sasha told us about some of the really wonderful things about coronavirus, like staying home isn't so bad. Sometimes you get to spend extra time with your family, extra time playing with your siblings, eating yummy food, wearing clo cozy clothes, playing games in your house. Some things right now are really nice. Even though you might miss school and your friends, you also get more time with your family. Yesterday, you also wrote in your journal about something that was good about staying home, something you liked. I really enjoyed reading all of your entries in your journal. Thanks for sharing with me. Let's keep on reading today. And so they said goodbye to Sasha and set off once more. The air grew warmer as they landed on an island surrounded by the sea. There they saw a camp full of people. One girl saw them and waved from a distance. Hi, Aria. I'm so happy to see you again, she called out. We are trying to stay at least one meter away, or six feet. So I'll talk to you from here. But I'd love to meet your friends. My name is Layla. Hi, Layla. I'm Sarah, and this is Salem, Sarah called back. It sounds like you're trying to protect yourself from the coronavirus. What else are you doing? We're washing our hands with soap and water, Layla called back. Do you also cough into your elbow? Asked Salem. Can you show us how? Layla called back. So Salem showed them. We are all trying to be brave, but I am worried about something, said Layla. Can I talk about it with you? I've heard someone got very sick and died, and it made me very afraid. Is it true people can die from coronavirus? Ario breathed a big sigh and sat down on his enormous bottom. Yes, little heroes, it's strange, said Ario. Some people don't feel sick at all. 
but some people can be very sick and some might die. That's why we all have to be especially careful with older people and those with other illnesses because they tend to get more sick. Sometimes when we are feeling very afraid or unsafe, it can help to imagine a safe place in our minds. Would you like to try this with me? They all said yes. And so Ario asked the children to close their eyes and imagine a place where they feel safe. Let's see if we can try this with Ario. Let's close our eyes and imagine a place where we feel safe. There's lots of places you might feel safe. You might feel safe when you're in your bed, or you might feel safe when you're on the couch with your mommy and your grandma, or you might feel safe when you're with your dolls and your stuffies. You might feel safe at your grandpa's house or your auntie's house. There's lots of places people feel safe. I know I feel safe when I'm in my bed with my teddy bear. Ready? I'm going to close my eyes and picture myself in my bed with my teddy bear. I feel better already. Now you try. Think of somewhere that you feel safe. Say, I feel safe when I'm... Maybe it's even at school. Now close your eyes. Make a movie in your brain. Pretend you're in your safe place. How did it feel? Did you feel safer in your safe spot? Sometimes it takes practice. Sometimes you have to do this again and again and again until your brain gets used to it. Let's keep reading. Focus on a memory or a time when you felt safe, said Ario. He then asked them what they could see, what they could feel, and what they could smell in their safe place. He asked if there was anyone special they would like to invite into their safe place and what they might talk about together. You can go to your safe place whenever you feel sad or afraid, said Ario. This is your superpower and you can share it with your friends and family. And remember that I care about you, and many people do. That will help too. Layla said we can all care for each other. That's right, Layla, said Ario. We can care for each other wherever we are. Would you like to come with us on our last journey? Layla decided to travel with Ario and her new friends. Sarah was glad Layla joined them because she knew that sometimes we need to support each other. They flew quietly without words, but Layla knew her friends cared a lot about her. Snowy mountains slowly came into view, and Ario landed in a small town. A few children were playing by a stream. Ario, one of them cried, waving to him. Hello, Kim, said Ario. Everyone, I want you to meet some friends of mine who have had the coronavirus and got better. What was it like, Salem asked. I was coughing and felt too hot sometimes. I was also really tired and didn't want to play for a few days, said Kim. But I slept a lot and my family took care of me. Some of our parents and grandparents had to go to the hospital. The nurses and doctors were very kind to them and people in our community helped us at home. After a few weeks, we were okay again. I'm Kim's friend said one of the other children. Just because Kim had the coronavirus, we didn't stop being friends, even though I could not see him. I never stopped caring about him, and we're happy we can play together again. Sometimes the most important thing we can do as friends is protect each other, said Ario. 
even if that means staying away from each other for a while. Yeah, sometimes you have people that you love, people in your family, your friends, your teachers, all the people in your life that you love and care about, that you want to see. But the best thing you can do right now is keep them safe by staying away and seeing them through things like video and the phone instead. Eventually, it'll be safe to see them in real life again, and you can give them a big hug when that happens. We can do these things for each other, said Layla, and one day we will be able to play again and go back to school like we used to, said Salem. It was time to go home and time for Sarah to say goodbye to her new friends. They promised each other that they would never forget their adventure together. Sarah felt sad that they might not see each other for a while, but she felt better when she remembered what Kim's friend had said. Just because you can't see people, it doesn't mean you stop loving them. That's true. Like, I can't see you in real life right now, but I love you all so, 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 so much. Just because I can't see you doesn't mean I stop loving you. Ario dropped them all back at their homes and waited for Sarah to fall asleep before he left. Can we do the same tomorrow? Sarah asked him. No, Sarah. It's time for you to be with your family now, said Ario. Remember our story. You can keep those you love safe by washing your hands and staying home. I am never far away. You can always be with me when you go to your safe place. You are my hero, she whispered. You are my hero too, Sarah. You are a hero to all those who love you, he said. Sarah fell asleep, and when she woke up the next day, Aria was gone. So she went to her safe place to talk to him. Remember, the safe place is somewhere you go in your brain, in your imagination. Then, through everything she had seen and learned on their adventure, she ran to her mom with her drawing to tell her the news. We can all help people be safe, Mom, she said. I met so many heroes on my adventure. Oh, Sarah, you are right, said her mom. There are many heroes keeping people safe from the coronavirus, like wonderful doctors and nurses, and all the people who work to keep our, say, our community safe and clean and help get us the things we need, like the people who work at the grocery stores and the restaurants that are getting you the food, and all the things you need to be safe and healthy in your house. Or all the other people who work in hospitals and places that keep us clean, that help people get healthy. Lots of people are working to make sure that we're all safe. They are heroes too. We're also heroes by staying in our house and being safe, even though we might miss school. Right now, sometimes you can be a hero by staying home, like me and you. But you remind me that we can all be heroes every day. And my biggest hero is you. The end. Remember how Ario and the kids imagined a safe place in their brain? They used this to make themselves feel better when they were scared or worried or sad. And then we talked about our safe place. Today we're going to write in our reader's journal about our safe place. We're going to draw it, label it, and write a sentence. Let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start by writing about my safe place. Let me turn to the next blank page in my journal. Here we go. All right, I'm going to start with my sentence. You can say, I feel safe when, or you can say, my safe place is. I'm going to say my safe place is in my bed with my head. All right, let me start with my first word. What's the first word in my safe place is in my bed with my head? What's the first word? That's right, my. It's a said word. 
uppercase M because it's the first letter of the sentence. M Y spells my, my, my. Notice that my Y is lowercase. My safe. Two finger space. S socks. S A A O. Oh. A acorn. Safe. F fish. My safe place. Two finger space. He pig. Play a a a long a again a a corn a place that could be s socks or c celery. I'm gonna go c celery because I think I've seen a c in it when grown ups write it or when I see the books. My safe place is oh that's a sight word two finger space i s spells is 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 my safe place is in my bed in should i write it there or there down here no all the way left i n spells in 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 my safe place is in my oh another side word M Y spells my, 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 in my bed. Two finger space, but, 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 be there. The e, 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 egg, e. The d, 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 dog. My bed with. W w w w window. What it 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 I iguana it with. Now this is tricky. It sounds a little bit like a f fish with, but it's not with. It's with <laughs> with a th thumb with. My, oh my again, lots of mys. M Y spells my, 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 with my head. Two finger space. T, t, t. T, turtle. T, t, e, 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 e. Ted, d, 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 Ted E E Eagle. Long E. And a period at the end. Let's read it. My safe place is in my bed with my head. Now I need to draw a picture and label. I can add some labels like me and he spells me, me, me and Teddy. T -t -t. Add d -d 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 -e eagle. I can label my string lights. L -l 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 I t lights. I can label my lamp. L a a a apple, lamb. I can label my window. W w w w it 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 in the 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 window. 
I can label my rug. Umbrella rug. And I can label my bed. Be there. Pause now to do your reading homework. Pause our hora para hacer tu tarea de lectura. Think about your safe place. Write and draw about it in your reader's journal. Pay extra attention to sight words and listen closely to the sounds you hear in words. Don't forget your two finger spaces, your uppercase and lowercase letters, and a period. Piensa en tu lugar seguro. Escribe y dibuja sobre esto en tu diario de lector. Presta especial atención a las palabras de uso frecuente, palabras a la vista, sight words, y escucha atentamente los sonidos que escuchas en las palabras. No olvides tus espacios para dos dedos, two finger spaces, tus letras mayúsculas y minúsculas y un punto. Wow! We're already on the last page of our new writing book? Whoa! You are super speedy narrative writers! <gasps> Duh! These kids are really smart! They work really hard with their brains! Obviously, they're writing a lot of stuff! Are you surprised? I'm not. Miss Pinion, Miss Schminion, get out of here! I have to teach these kids something else that narrative writers do. Today I want to teach you that narrative writers, writers that write stories about their lives that go in time order, they can end their story with a feeling. Let's name some feelings. What are some feelings that you might feel at the end of your story? Maybe at the end of your story you felt happy. Or maybe you felt goofy. Or maybe you were surprised or excited. Or maybe you were tired at the end. Maybe like you did a lot of things and then you were tired. Or maybe you felt silly or funny or proud or annoyed or bored or sick or quiet or sad or scared. There's so many feelings you can end with. Okay, writers, so today I'm going to show you how I add a feeling to my story, to my narrative about Will's birthday. I'm going to start by reading over my book and reminding myself what I was writing. First, I made decorations for the party. Then we ordered food. It was yummy. And now on my last page, I want to share a feeling. I want to share how we felt in the end of the book. Um, should I say we were scared? No, we weren't scared. We were happy. So I'm going to write, we felt happy because, why did we feel happy? We felt happy because we celebrated together. I'm going to write that. It's really good to add a feeling and tell why you felt that way. We felt happy because. All right, should I start all the way down here? No, I'm not going to have enough space. I'll start up here. We, that's a sight word. W-E spells we, we, we. We felt. We felt happy because 
Ooh, because sounds like a long word. I don't know if I'm gonna fit it there. I'm gonna go to the next line, back to the left. Because, oh, I hear the sight word B in there. B-E spells B. B -k 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 -c cat. Because uh 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 you umbrella uh sorry you umbrella uh because z zebra we felt happy because we celebrated together. Okay, next word is we felt happy because we oh sight word easy peasy w e spells we. We, we. Notice how I used an uppercase W here because it was the first word in the sentence, the first letter of the first word. But I'm using lowercase letters the rest of the time, unless it's someone's name. Then we use an uppercase, but that we know. We felt happy because we celebrated. S -s -s Ooh, it could be S socks or C celery. I'm gonna go C celery. That looks right. S -a 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 -e egg -a. Cell -e. Cell -a 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 -e egg again. Cell -a -b 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 bear. Cell Celebrate a a long a a chord. Celebrate. Uh oh, I want to teach you a trick. Sometimes you think you're gonna have enough space, but then you run out. What you can do is you can do a little line. That's called a dash or a hyphen, and that means that the word's gonna continue on the next line. So I'm gonna go down here. Celebrate. T turtle t celebrate at e egg again. Celebrate d -d 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 dog. We felt happy because we celebrated together. Oh, I hear the sight word too. T O to g -g 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 go to get a a a e egg a to get the the ooh i hear that the 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 like the 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 some to get our ring and a period at the end we felt happy because we celebrated together Awesome. I could also have said that Will felt loved because we remembered his birthday. That would be good too. Loved is another feeling you could write about. Now I'm going to draw a picture. I should make sure that I draw our faces looking happy. My sentence is about feeling happy, so my picture has to show that. I'm going to draw big smiles on our faces. I'm drawing us in the kitchen, drawing our hair and the decorations in the window using people colors, trying my best to make it look like real life, even though it's not perfect, coloring our clothes. And now I should add some labels. I'm gonna write me, and E spells me, me, me. I'm gonna write Will. W -w -w window w it, 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 iguana will and i'm gonna use a big uppercase w because it's his name and i write zach big uppercase c because it's his name Z -a 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 -a. oh zach c cat and i can label our window w it, 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 and d -d -d Oh, and I can label that paper chain. P -p 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 -p. Pig, P A long A, P -p 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 -p. paper R ring, paper chain. Ch -ch Ooh, Ch -ch chair, 
C H. Ch A A acorn. Chain n -n 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 and nest. Say good job, Miss Minion. You wrote about a feeling and drew a picture to show the feeling. Today, I want you to finish your narrative story. Try to see if you can end it with a feeling, like happy or proud or excited or tired because you did a lot of things. And make sure you write it in the words and show it in the picture on your faces. Happy writing. I can't wait to read your stories. Pause now to do your writing homework. Pausa ahora para hacer tu tarea de escritora. Finish your narrative story by adding a feeling to page three. How did you feel at the end of the story? Don't forget to make your words and pictures match. Terminé su historia narrativa agregando un sentimiento a la página tres. ¿Cómo se sintió al final de la historia? No olvides hacer coincidir tus palabras y imágenes. All right, mathematicians. Today we're going to be talking more about subtraction. Let's say that word again. We'll do it five times. Ready? Subtraction, subtraction, subtraction. Are you saying it with me? Subtraction, subtraction. And subtraction is all about taking things away. Addition was about adding more or putting things together. Subtraction is about taking things away. We're going to work with that word less and left. Let's say that word left. Like Miss Minion had 20 students and they all went outside. How many are left? None. Get it? Left? We'll talk more about it. Let's go ahead and get started. Today you'll need your whiteboard and your counting cubes or counting marbles. Okay, let's talk about that fish story from yesterday. Marta sees five goldfish in the pond. Let me put out five marbles to be the five goldfish. One, two, Three, four, five. Do you see my five goldfish? Yeah, they're not real goldfish. They're marbles, but we're gonna use the marbles because I don't have real goldfish. The marbles represent the goldfish. Can you say that word represent? Say it out loud. Awesome, represent is when we use something to pretend to be something else. Okay. We have five goldfish in the pond. One goldfish swims away. How many are left? Let's count them. One, two, three, four. There are four left. Four left. How many fish were there to start? That's right, there were five fish to start. When I say some swim away, is the number left bigger, greater, or less, smaller than the number we had in the beginning? You can say it is that's right, it's smaller, it's less. When we have some and then we take some away, we're always gonna be left with a number that's smaller, a number that is less. Now, if another goldfish swims away, what is going to happen? How many am I going to have left? You can say you will have Did you say three? This one swims away too. Now I have one, two, three left. 
Remember, subtraction is about starting with a number, taking some away, and seeing what you have left. What you have left is going to be a smaller number than what you had in the beginning because you took some away. It's no! You're doing it wrong! Yeah, look, you did it wrong. That's five, that's five. Look, one, two, three, four, five. There's five. No, Miss Minion. These are the ones that swam away. We're looking for how many are left in the pond, not the ones that swam away. Yeah, there were five in the pond, but these two don't count anymore because they swam away. We're looking for how many we have left in the pond, not how many we have in all. Does that make sense, Miss Minion? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I'm not counting all of them. I'm just counting the ones that are left in the pond. All right, let's think about another one. What do you see? You can say, I see. Did you see six marbles? Now watch what happens. There are six marbles in all. What happened? How many marbles were taken away? That's right, three marbles were taken away. How many marbles are left? That's right, three marbles are left. One, two, three. We can write three, uh, and three left. All right, now we're going to do some practice together. Let's look at this picture. What is happening? You can say, the ladybugs are Yeah, the ladybugs are on the leaf and some climbed off the leaf. Let's look at this. There are nine in all. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But some ladybugs climbed off the leaf. Look at that. There are four ladybugs. One, two, three, four, that climbed off the leaf. Now, how many ladybugs are left? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. See, one, two, three, four, five. Five are left. The next few you're going to do for homework. I'll show them to you, but your job is to figure out how many are left on your own. You ready? Let's do your math homework. Este es la tarea de matemáticas. Look at the picture problems. Can you figure out how many are left? You can count on the computer or use your cubes and marbles to act it out. Write the answer on your whiteboard using the words mm, are left. Parents, I do not yet expect a number sentence or equation. We will get there later this week. Just the number left is good for today. Mira los problemas de imagen. Puedes calcular cuántos quedan. Puede contar con la computadora o usar sus cubos y canicas para representarla. Escriba la respuesta en su pizarra con las palabras que quede. Mm, are left. Padres, todavía no espero una ecuación o oración numérica. Llegaremos ahí más adelante esta semana. Solo el número restante es bueno para hoy. Try this one. Start by counting how many worms in all, and then see how many left the leaf. 
How many worms are left on the leaf? Write your answer on your whiteboard using the word left. L-E-F-T. Pause the video on this screen while you do your work. Pause the video on este imagen. All right, now try this one. How many balls in all, and then how many bars were taken out of the jar? How many balls are left in the jar? Now try this one. Think about how many fingers went down and how many fingers are left up. Now let's try making up some of your own. Draw these nine bouncy balls on your whiteboard. You can use circles. Then cross some out. How many are left? It's up to you to decide. Can you make up another subtraction problem? This one's blank. I want you to come up with a picture story. Draw it on your whiteboard and then write how many in all and how many are left. All right, learners. Today from Phonics, we're going to be doing a little bit more work in our handwriting books. We're going to start with the letter V, like V, violin, V. Feel that on your lips? All right. You start at the skyline. You slant down, slant up. Just like that. Make sure it comes all the way to the skyline and touches the ground line too. Not below it, not above it, not in the middle, but touching the top and the bottom. Your turn. Slant down, slant up. Slant down, slant up. Notice how neat they are, they're staying right in between that skyline and that ground line. Are yours touching the skyline and the ground line without going over? Check up. Case V is very similar, but this time you start at the dotted middle line. Slant down, slant up. Slant down, slant up. This time I'm touching the middle line and the ground line. Should they be up here? No. Slant down, slant up. Slant down, slant up. Now we're going to make a U, like U umbrella uh, 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 or you unicorn, the long U sound. U is a vowel, so it has a short and a long sound. It's kind of like a V, but a little curvier. You start at the skyline, curve down, around, up, and back down. Your turn. Curve down, up, and down. Curve down, up, straight down. Curve down, up, straight down. I know some of you might want to make them look more like this. Without the tail, that's okay too. If you like that better. They are both right. For a lowercase u, it's the same thing, but you start at the middle dotted line. Pull down, curve round, up, and back down. And my little ones. Curve around, up, down. Notice how I'm staying above the ground line. The used tail does not go all the way down. Otherwise, it'll look like a Y. Pause now to do your phonics homework. Pausa ahora para hacer tu tarea fonética. Practice the letters V and U in your handwriting books. Focus on making the letters exactly like Miss Minion does. 
Make sure they don't come above the skyline or below the ground line. Practica las letras V y U en tus libros de escritura. Concentrese en hacer las letras exactamente como lo hace la señora Minion. Asegurarse de que no vengan por encima de la línea del cielo o por debajo de la línea del suelo. Sticker time! This was lesson 22. Great job! So close to the prize!